welcome to our continuation of uh, our design and remedy videos. Today we're going to do a really simple uh, relay change. Um, again, follow all precautions. Don't do this unless you're qualified. Turn off the power. Use all that safety stuff that uh, you could possibly imagine. And for this particular video, we uh, did some proactive maintenance using a an infrared camera. So these things are expensive and they're nice to have and this shows the top relay that's uh, obviously uh, too hot in a 200 degree range. And this was taken after the kiln had been operating in near top temperatures so now we knew that uh, all these relays were as hot as they were going to be. So that's what the camera looks like now back in the day you know I owned this thing and it was you know a thousand two thousand dollars nowadays you can get them for four or five hundred dollars and they're nicer than what we have here uh, but as long as we have one we get creative and there's where you see we're taking a look at the power pl uh, cord and uh, we'll have some videos showing you some of those failures that we discovered uh, there's a picture of uh, looking at breakers so pretty easy to spot breakers that are weak or going bad or have a loose connection. And uh, you don't have to be uh, a millionaire. Uh, you know, they have so many non-contact thermometers now. Here's another oldie that was expensive, but uh, in place of the IR camera, it was much cheaper and can be used. Um, the camera is great. I can look in a kiln and see if, you know, every element's lit right away. Uh, from a design standpoint, I think I designed this hood to not exceed 500 degrees under natural draft. So, you know, we're confirming that at top temperature of the kiln. Um, some creative uses of the camera on some sculpture work, you know, where it's still wet and evaporation is cooling the sculpture. It's pretty obvious under infrared cameras. So that's kind of getting creative with something that you already own. Uh, but again, and there's no mistaking. There's three relays there. The top one is the one that we should examine and it looks like that uh, spade connector is loose and generating heat. Um, just for curiosity I went and googled and I found you know a nice spot non-contact thermometer for 20 bucks. <laughs> uh, I guess I'd be okay if it was plus or minus 20 degrees at that price. Anyway, a uh, quick video on replacing a relay. Really simple task. Again, don't do it in, unless you're absolutely qualified. Um, and take all the safety precautions necessary. Don't work with the power on, all that other good stuff. Um, but a quick video just to show you how quick and easy it really is to do. And I hope you enjoy it. Alrighty, we're back in the studio. And the other day when one of our kilns was firing closer to top temperature I took that opportunity to take an infrared scan of the relays and we found out our top relay was about 227 degrees and uh, the ambient around it was in the 80 to 90 degree range so we know that relay is going bad so uh, what we're going to do today is swap out that relay. So, uh, first step is going to be disconnect all power and then we're going to go ahead and pull the screws out of this thing, open it up and let you see how simple it is to change a relay. So that's the plan and uh, we'll get set up and get you right back. All right, we're back. Step one, always, always remember Disconnect the power. There we go. Disconnected. Step two is going to be to get this thing in focus and remove the, all the screws. And this is a cone arc. So it has a hinge, 
and once you remove the screws, it opens. So, let's see what we got here. Here are our relays, three of them. Transformer above and our Bartlett controller on top, which is configured for three zones. And I'm gonna get you focused on the relays. I'm gonna pin this door right about here. Go get a relay and let's change out that top one that we know is bad. Alrighty, back again with a new relay in hand and um, it's time to remove the old one so I'm going to loosen up this outside screw and I'm going to remove the screw on the right hand side and there it goes so my relay is ready I haven't taken the wires off though. Next, I'm gonna take my relay, my new relay, uh, put it in place. And I guess I'll work with two hands here and get it mounted. So, hopefully I won't block the picture here. But, I'm going to install the new relay, nice and tight and snug. Next step is to transfer my wires, wire for wire, point for point, so I don't lose track. So, now is a good time to notice any loose wires or loose connectors. And we'll see how this is. This doesn't seem like the tightest in the world, so I'm gonna put that on and so I'm gonna continue with removing my wires one at a time and placing them back in the exact spot they came from. So I can't get messed up. And then the next thing I would do is check all these connections, make sure I have knocked anything off for loose. And I'm just gonna give the kiln a once over uh, to make sure that there's no burned connections or obvious loose connections. And I'm done changing my relay. Alrighty. We're back in the studio and back at the kiln and we've programmed a uh, test program and we have our amp probe here, which has a built-in light that actually works. Um, and I'm gonna set this on the 200 amp mode and we're gonna hit the button and start our, I've uh, changed it to a 500 degree uh, test and here we go let's hit start and uh, 500 degree go as fast as you can test we'll turn all the relays on so we'll see what we got we have 17.3 amps there 17.8 there and 18 amps there so it looks pretty good, all very close. I don't have the floor with me today, but we should be able to get by with this. So this was the offending relay. I've got 69 degrees, 69 degrees, 69 degrees. If you recall, this was the really hot one at 200 and some odd degrees. So we'll give it some time to cook and uh, We'll see if she heats up anymore. So we're back and we've been at it for a while here and our kiln temperature is going up. And 
Let's take a look. 75, 76, maybe 79, 80, eh, a little warm, 85 in a spot or two. That one's probably going to need new crimp connectors soon. And let's see how we're doing. 16.9, almost 17 amps. Relay number two, 17.6. And number three, 17.9. So it looks like we've repaired the top relay. If you remember from the picture, it was over 270 degrees, so it was definitely failing. And now it is the best of the bunch. Um, so that's it. That's a quick relay change, and I believe we're almost up to 500 degrees in our kiln. So I'm happy. So we did some preventative maintenance and replaced the relay before it went bad. Alrighty, we are back and we buttoned up our kiln, plugged it back in and continued it on its test fire to 500 degrees. And again, this was to cure this problem where the top relay was in excess of 220 degrees. So we knew it was failing. And uh, we're on a 500 degree test here as fast as we can go. And I know this controller, when I press eight, it shows me those three dots, which means all three relays are operating. And uh, looks like we're going up at a good rate. So I think we have everything cured. We did uh, our amp probe test. Uh, we do know we could use some better um, crimp connectors on the bottom relays. I uh, don't have any of those right now, so maybe the next project is get some of those connectors and replace the ones that are a little bit loose. Um, I think this kiln has over a thousand firings on it, so it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, and we should be coming up to... Uh, 500 degrees and we should get a completion of our firing and it's taken so far six minutes and so very shortly we should hear the kiln search a little bit drop the relays in and out as it gets really close to 500 as the uh, PID module tries to figure out when to shut off the relays. And that should be coming up soon. Oh, the middle section is 480. The top is 482. Or the very top is 529. Middle is 484. So we got a little ways to go for 500 degrees. And I've got the middle and bottom relays on. And they are the lowest temperature in the kiln so I it hasn't overshot there you go 491 nine minutes and that's hard to do this 494 on the bottom 493 in the middle 534 on top kind of what we'd expect with an empty kiln okay that's it that's all there is to changing a relay and then doing a decent test afterwards well if you made it this far thanks for watching um, we'll have some other uh, repair videos coming up uh, some other some cooler stuff this is pretty basic uh, but for now we got a simple video up on repairs and don't forget to uh, give us some likes and subscribe and we'll actually if you want to put some uh, comments or questions um, or post them, uh, even requests for video, and we'll look to make those. So, again, thanks for joining us. Give us some likes, subscribe, and hopefully we see you in the next video.